Major Characters of Gulliver's Travels by Jonathan Swift. Written by Ohida Rahman and voiced by British Brian Ivona. Lemuel Gulliver. A bold adventurer, visits a multitude of strange lands, stills difficult to regard him as truly heroic, even well before his slide going into a worse state, often through lack of control or care into misanthropy disliking other people and avoiding involvement with society at the end of the book, simply does not show the stuff of which grand heroes are made, not cowardly, on the contrary, undergoes the unnerving experiences of nearly being devoured by a giant rat, taken captive by pirates, shipwrecked on faraway shores, sexually assaulted by an eleven-year-old girl, and shot in the face with poison arrows, additionally, isolation from humanity he endures for sixteen years must be hard to bear, though rarely talks about such matters, yet despite the courage he shows throughout voyages, character lacks basic greatness, impression could be due to the fact, rarely shows feelings, reveals soul, or experiences great passions of any sort, but other literary adventurers, like Odysseus in Homer's Odyssey, seem heroic without being particularly open about their emotions, what seems most lacking is not courage or feelings, but drive, one modern critic has described Gulliver as possessing the smallest will in all of western literature, simply devoid of a sense of mission, a goal that would make his wandering into a quest. Odysseus's goal is to get home again, Aeneas's goal in Virgil's Aeneid is to found Rome, but Gulliver's goal on his sea voyage is uncertain, says, needs to make some money after the failure of his business, but rarely mentions finances throughout the work and indeed almost never even mentions home, has no awareness of any greatness in what he is doing or what he is working toward, in short, has no aspirations, leaves home on his travels for the first time, gives no impression, regards himself as undertaking a great endeavor or embarking going onto a ship on a thrilling new challenge, we may also note Gulliver's lack of ingenuity and savvy practical knowledge and ability, other great travelers, such as Odysseus, get themselves out of dangerous situations by exercising their wits and ability to trick others seems too dull for any battles of wit and too unimaginative to think up tricks, and thus ends up being passive in most of the situations in which finds himself, held captive several times throughout voyages, but never once released through his own stratagems a carefully planned way of achieving or dealing with something, often involving a trick, relying instead on chance factors for his liberation, once presented with a way out, works hard to escape as when repairs the boat he finds that delivers him from Blefuscu, but is never actively ingenious in attaining freedom, example summarizes quite well his intelligence, which is factual and practical rather than imaginative or introspective, gullible easily deceived or tricked, and too willing to believe everything that other people say, as his name suggests. For example, misses the obvious ways in which the Lilliputians exploit him while quite adept at navigational calculations and the humdrum having no excitement, interest or new and different events, ordinary details of seafaring connected with traveling by sea far less able to reflect on himself or his nation in any profoundly critical way, traveling to such different countries and returning to England in between each voyage, he seems poised showing very calm and controlled behavior to make some great anthropological the study of the human race its culture and society and its physical development speculations when you guess possible answers to a question without having enough information to be certain about cultural differences around the world, about how societies are similar despite their variations or different despite their similarities, but, frustratingly, gives us nothing of the sort, provides us only with literal facts and narrative events, never with any generalizing or philosophizing, a self-hating, self-proclaimed Yahoo at the end, announcing his misanthropy quite loudly, but even this attitude is difficult to accept as the moral of the story, not a figure with whom we identify but, rather, part of the array a large group of things or people, especially one which is attractive or causes admiration and often one which has been positioned in a particular way of personalities and behaviors about which we must make judgments the Queen of Brobdingnag, hardly a well-developed character but important in one sense, 
one of the very few females given much notice. Gulliver's own wife is scarcely even mentioned, even at what one would expect to be the touching moment of homecoming at the end of the fourth voyage. Gulliver seems little more than indifferent to his wife, farmer's daughter in Brobdingnag wins some of Gulliver's attention but chiefly because she cares for him so tenderly. Gulliver is courteous to the Empress of Lilliput but presumably mainly because she is royalty. Brobdingnagian queen, however, arouses some deeper feelings in Gulliver that go beyond her royal status. Gulliver compliments her effusively, as he does no other female personage in the work, calling her infinitely witty and humorous. Gulliver describes in proud detail the manner in which he is permitted to kiss the tip of her little finger. For her part, Queen seems earnest in her concern about Gulliver's welfare. When her court dwarf insults him, she gives the dwarf away to another household as punishment. Interaction between Gulliver and the Queen hints, Gulliver is indeed capable of emotional connections. O Hida Chad, a certain professor of English and director, Language Center, University of Information Technology and Sciences. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching.